Today we celebrate as an order of the apostles of Jesus and our sisters evangelizing sisters of Mary together with our other sister congregations, our founders day. Our founders, both Italian Kongoli missionaries, they died on the 27th of July at the difference of 10 years. So we want to pray through the, the intercession that the mustard seed they conceived they keep bearing fruit through the spirit they live as missionaries. That inspired by the example, as the orders we may be committed to the service of God's people. Together with our different intentions, we now begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent with the comfort of God, Lord of mercy. Came to all sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, protect of those who hope in you. Without whom nothing has found foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way to hold fast even for those that endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord said to me, Go, buy yourself a linen loincloth, Wear it on your loins, but do not put it in water. I bought the loincloth, as the Lord commanded, and put it on. A second time, the word of the Lord came to me thus. Take the loincloth which you bought and are wearing, and go now to the parath. There, hide it in a cleft of the rock. Obedient to the Lord's command, I went to the parath and buried the loincloth. After a long interval, the Lord said to me, Go now to the palace and fetch the loincloth, which I told you to hide there. Again, I went to the palace, sought out and took out the loincloth from the place where I had hid it. But it was rotted, good for nothing. Then a message came to me from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, So also will I allow the pride of Judah to rot, the great, great pride of Jerusalem. This wicked people who refuse to obey my words, who walk in the stubbornness of their hearts and follow strange gods to serve and adore them, shall be like this loincloth, which is good for nothing. So had I made the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah claim to me, says the Lord, to be my people, my renown, my praise, my beauty, but they did not listen. The word of the Lord. Response, so your son, you have forgotten God who gave you birth. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. You were unmindful of the rock that begot you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. 
When the Lord saw this, he was filled with loathing and anger toward his sons and daughters. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what will then become of them. What a fickle race they are, sons with no loyalty in them. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. Since they have provoked me with their no God and angered me, angered me with their vain idols, I will provoke them with an old people, with a foolish nation. I will anger them. You have forgotten the God who gave you birth. Alleluia, alleluia. The Father willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed a parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when fully grown, it is the largest of the plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and drill in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in three measures of wheat flour until the whole bunch was leavened. All the things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I'll open my mouth in parables. I'll announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The readings of today, my dear brothers and sisters, they center on the theme and an invitation for building the kingdom of God. A reminder to each one of us that it is our responsibility to build the kingdom of God. And there's nothing that is small or insignificant when it comes to building the kingdom of God. A kingdom that is characterized by reciprocal love and fidelity from that shared love of God. Whenever we, in our efforts, we imitate in the love of God, then we are contributing in the building of the kingdom of God. Whenever in our different challenges, we execute our fidelity to God's command, our fidelity to our faith, in a way we build the kingdom of God. This is something that escaped the minds of the Israelites as we had in the first reading. And that's why even the psalm refers to them and refers to us as well. You have forgotten God who gave birth to you. In a way they forgot the God who had shown them such fidelity and also who had shown them such love. And that's why Jeremiah refers to them as a rotten 
loin cloth. I don't know whether we are accustomed to what a loin cloth is, is but is a single piece of cloth that is wrapped around the waist or the, the hips, creating a very close intimacy with the body. This was what this was what was supposed to be a relationship between Israel and God. Just like that intimacy created because of the God's love to them, they were expected to have such a very intimate relationship with their God. But that's not what happened. They added infidelity over infidelity. And that's why Jeremiah uses the metaphor of a rotten loin cloth to refer to Israelite rotten behavior in their own relationship with their God that became an obstacle of building a kingdom of God among them. God used them as a point of departure, as the chosen race, to build his kingdom. But instead, they became an obstacle to that. In the gospel, Jesus uses two parables. The parable of the mustard seed and the parable of yeast to explain the kingdom of God. Reminding us, as I said, that no one is insignificant and nothing is insignificant when it comes to contributing to building the kingdom of God. And as I said at the introduction today, as the order of the apostles of Jesus, we have the sisters of Mary, we have the sacred heart sisters, we have uh, the brothers of Martin before, then we have the contemplative, conceived as our founders put it at a very insignificant time, among very insignificant people. Like we conceived during the time of war, when there was total war in Uganda and Sudan, when missionaries were persecuted and conceived among the, most, the, the primitive people in the northern part of Uganda, the Karamojons, just like the mustard seed. But since it is God's hand, we have expanded and grown and grown to the level that we are capable of being even in such great places, doing the same work of the mustard seed. That's why we want to pray through them, that they who conceived us as a mustard seed may inspire and protect the mission they began as we celebrate today, their day, when God called them back. We are challenged, my dear brothers and sisters, to reflect on our efforts, no matter how insignificant we may consider them to be, in building the kingdom of God. Aware that as the psalm put it, or we make the psalm our prayer, that whenever we don't, we, we, we remember to live in God's expectation, not forgetting the God who conceived us, not the, forgetting the God who has given us our being, or who we are, those efforts will always bear fruit. We pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that you and me become those instruments of building the kingdom of God here on earth. We pray. For the church, may the Lord bless and protect us from evil and bring us everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Amen.
for our national and local representatives. May God grant them compassion to see his face in most vulnerable whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick, especially those who lack adequate health care, support or strength of spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord for this faith community, may God look graciously upon those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all the faithful departed, and we keep remembering Ambrose Okoro. May they come to enjoy the perfect peace and the abundance of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Precious
you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that they do for us, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Spirit, prayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given out for In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the child and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this the child of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come to us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer, Lord, the bread of life and the chance of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us what to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring up the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope. Timothy, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the, of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the, the light of your face. Our mass on us, all we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be compared to eternal life. I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, and with him, and in him, O God, O my Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace has grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed day and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace us grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, we take our sins into the world, our hearts to us. the Lamb of God, for the immortates away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to the but only say the Lord.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and O thanksgiving, be ever more divine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and O thanksgiving, be ever more divine. I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself fully to you, never permitting to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all things may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is Enjoy the rest of the